a desert planet with twin suns. They call themselves the Bad Batch. We do what we do. What else you got? Give me more! Welcome back to another Bad Batch review and breakdown here on Twin Sun Talks Regs. I'm your host, Jonah Liu. Sorry that this is a day later than normal. Uh, my family was out of town and we tried to get home ahead of the tropical storm that's brewing in the Gulf of Mexico at the moment. So I uh, didn't have any opportunities to record it yesterday, but gotta say, I love this episode so, so much and I can't wait to uh, talk to you all about it. So let's just get right into it. I have spoken. Welcome back to I've Spoken, folks. Today, as usual, I'm going to be starting off with my non-spoiler review, going straight into full spoiler breakdown and review, followed by my theories for uh, this series moving forward. So, my non-spoiler review is, I can't praise this episode enough. This is exactly what I was hoping for uh, from this show, and it made me so very giddy. The tension was real, the stakes felt high, and I really hope they stay on that trajectory. This show is starting to really ramp up, and I'm so excited for the second half of the season to roll through. Shout out to Dave Filoni. The man knows what we want. And moving forward in this episode, we're going to have full spoilers. So if you haven't watched episode 8 of the Bad Batch series, episode 8 reunion, don't listen to the rest of this if you want to avoid spoilers. This is my spoiler warning that I do in every single one of these. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Please, I don't want to ruin this for anybody. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Let's get into my full review breakdown right now. Full spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Okay, let's get into this. So, we open on Kamino, where Crosshair informs Rampart and Lamassu that the Bad Batch has been located on Bracca. Uh, Rampart says that he has no interest in rogue clones and to terminate them if they find them. Lamassu says that it would be ideal for the Bad Batch to be brought in alive, which Rampart just kind of ignores. So, we cut to Wrecker teaching Omega how to disarm a bomb on Bracca. And they kind of have a fun, mess-around type. Uh, they kind of continue that fun-uncle dynamic between the two, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, Echo comes and informs them that Hunter wants them back on the Jedi Cruiser, and as they're going back, they notice some members of the Scrappers Guild watching them. Uh, and after a small scuffle, they take the Scrappers out. Um... The Batch is back on the Jedi Cruiser, uh, and Echo implores Hunter that they should uh, leave. And Hunter says that they need more money so that they can make up that debt that they owe to Sid, and they can make a lot of money through the contents of the Cruiser, which since in the last episode we saw that there was a Dianoga on board, they think that that has deterred the Scrappers from offloading a lot of the materials off of that Cruiser. So... Echo points out that they wouldn't be in debt if they had gone with Rex in the last episode. And that kind of is a point of friction throughout this episode is Echo saying, dude, we're soldiers. Like, we're not built to be scrappers or bounty hunters. Like, we need to be doing what Rex is doing and making an actual difference. And Hunter is just trying to think of the team as a whole and thinking, okay, is that going to work for us in the long run? So at the end of the day... Uh, Hunter, Wrecker, Echo, and Omega go to the armory to get some weapons and munitions while Tech downloads intel from the bridge and gets the power back online. So the team assembles uh, their bounty of weapons and munitions in the armory, and then Omega goes back up and meets Tech on the bridge and asks him about the war a bit as she looks over the sea of dismantled ships. Uh, And Tech responds very matter-of-factly, which obviously doesn't really answer Omega's question, but before she can ask... Uh, more, the proximity alert goes off and three Imperial attack shuttles fly over them and Tech informs the rest of the team. So we cut back to Kamino after that and Nala Se and Lama Su, the two Kaminoans, the main Kaminoans, are talking about how the Imperial operation on Bracca is putting their contingency, which they refer to as the Young Clan, which is Omega, in jeopardy and they reveal that they have bounty hunters out to recover her. So they're the ones who hired Fennec Shand, and they're the ones who are trying to get Omega back in order to kind of preserve their usefulness to the Empire. So cut back to Bracca, Crosshair, and a whole battalion of regs, along with his special force troopers, touch down 
on the planet's surface, and he sends a small group of regs to secure the Bad Batch's ship, which we learn in this episode. I don't know if we learned this before, but they call it the Marauder. So I don't remember ever hearing uh, the official name of the ship, so that was just kind of cool to see. Um, the Bad Batch hustles through the ship with their weapons. They tap into the regs' comm channel so that they can know uh, how they're moving in the ship and how to avoid them. And they end up getting cornered, as Crosshair figured that they would tap into the comms and uh, kind of uses that to his advantage. Hunter and Omega attempt to appeal to Crosshair, saying, hey, this isn't you, like this is your inhibitor chip. That fails. But the Bad Batch ends up deliberately collapsing the room that they are in in order to escape and do so narrowly. Crosshair is getting rather frustrated and requests a transport to get him out of the wreckage. The Bad Batch ends up in the engine of the ship, one of the engines of the ship, and as a last-ditch attempt to escape. And as they're about to escape, Crosshair fires a warning shot, and they realize that they are surrounded. So they start to fall back, back into the engine, but it starts to come to life. And one of Crosshair's troops is activating it from the bridge, because Tech brought the power back online, so that's a possibility. The team resolves to blow up the structure of the engine in order to avoid getting taken out by Crosshair or being incinerated. And as the engine comes to life, the Bad Batch activates the charges that they place and detach the cone of the engine from the ship. This causes Crosshair and his troops to take the brunt of the ion engine blast as the Bad Batch falls within the cone, which splits into two pieces and divides the team. Hunter and Omega are on one side together, and uh, Wrecker Tech and Echo are on the other side. So as the engine is cut off, Crosshair is left burned and, v- burned and very badly injured, and a reg comes up to him to tend to him, and Crosshair tells the reg to make sure that the Bad Batch's ship, the Marauder, is secured in order to prevent their escape. The reg that was tending to Crosshair attempts to contact uh, the other clone in charge of securing the Bad Batch's ship, who is revealed to be dead. Uh, just as that is happening, Omega and Hunter arrive at the Marauder, and they, they're very cautious because they can tell that someone has been there, who, someone who took out all of the clones who were guarding the ship. And so they begin to cautiously approach the ship through the bodies of the dead clones, and we hear an all-too-familiar voice, and it is Cad freaking Bane. Oh my gosh. So he and his droid Toto 360 are the ones responsible for taking out the regs. Oh my gosh, guys, when I say that I jumped out of my seat, I was so excited. I had no idea that he was going to show up. I had, I figured that he might eventually, but no clue that it was going to be this early in the season or even in this show. I was so, so, so happy, so excited, and it caught me completely off guard. So anyways, Bane reveals that he is after Omega and that he needs her to come with him. And um, Hunter essentially says that's not going to happen, and they end up in a standoff. So the cool thing about this is that this scene is straight out of the unfinished episodes of The Clone Wars where Boba, Fett, and Bane are in a similar standoff. It's the same modeling, just with different characters and in a different setting. And this scene actually decanonizes that standoff due to the fact that Bane is still alive. So, Because in that scene... Uh, Boba actually ends up killing Bane, and that's where we see Boba get his iconic dent on his helmet. But, oh my gosh, having Bane be back, like, the lighting was so cinematic and fantastic, very reminiscent of his some of his first appearances in the Clone Wars. I thought his animation style looked great. The music was like an old western. Like, it was so, so amazing. And... Um, the two draw, Bane hits Hunter in the chest, and Hunter misses hitting Toto in the leg, and Hunter isn't moving. I legitimately thought he was dead. Like, I was sure, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this show just took a massive, massive turn. But, uh, Bane walks up, stuns Omega, we cut back to Crosshair, who's in really bad shape, he's got a bunch of bandages, I think I saw a prosthetic leg, but I could have been wrong. Uh, he's got his arm in a sling, his face is completely covered, he's got a, a... artificial breathing machine um and then we cut back we see a first person pov of hunter as the bad batch 
helps him to the Marauder uh, as regs are firing at them, trying to prevent them of escaping is very reminiscent of Republic Commando, which is a fantastic video game. It's a first person shooter game where you're uh, in a clone commando team. It's, it's really, really cool, but it, it reminded me so much of that just with the sound effects and uh, just the way that it looked props to Zay Filoni there. And Hunter is severely injured, but is able to tell the team that a bounty hunter took Omega and that they need to find her. End of episode. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. I, I geeked out so hard over this episode. It was so, so great. Easily a top three episode for me of the eight so far. I'm so, so happy with how this show, which was like, it was a pretty slow burn for a while, but it is picking up so much. Having the Empire back in the picture was fantastic. And the Bane reveal, like I said, made me literally jump out of my seat. Um, And I'm more than excited to see what happens next. I'm so, so pumped. But that's all I have for my review and breakdown. Let's hop into a very short segment of Visions. To continue, we need one singular vision. My vision. Alrighty. So, I'm like 90% sure that Bane being back is teasing his return in the Book of Boba Fett down the line. Either that or maybe Boba Fett is going to be uh, incorporated into the Bad Batch somehow. But I really think that that's what this is teasing. And I'm really excited. I hope Bane doesn't die in this show because I want to see him in live action. And I think that that would be super, super cool to see. Um, I think that the Kaminoans are getting less and less on board with the Empire, which makes me think that possibly a clone clone uprising is coming. And the fact that they want Omega makes me think that Starkiller might come into the picture, which I've kind of talked about before. And it's possible that maybe she's like uh, the, the, the beginnings of Palpatine's clone project. But this is, again, all under the assumption that Omega is Force-sensitive, which I really think that she is. I think that the stuff with uh, Echo is really interesting and his kind of, uh, kind of butting heads with Hunter over what their role is in the galaxy. And I think that that might foreshadow something in the future. Maybe Echo kind of leaving the team potentially going to join the rebellion i'm not entirely sure i'm still very certain that hunter and echo are probably going to be the only two alive by the end of the season i think crosshair is probably going to sacrifice himself for his brothers i think wrecker's probably going to die i don't know about tech maybe he'll be alive but i i honestly thought tech was going to die in the last episode so who knows but um anyways that's all that i have for this episode, I loved it so much. Once again, sorry this was a day late. Extenuating circumstances made it so that uh, I couldn't record the other day, but I really hope that y'all enjoyed it. I certainly did. And I really, really, really can't wait for next week. So, that being said, you've taken your first steps into a larger world. Oh, um, next week I'm going to be going through galactic uh, regions and planets and kind of uh, going through that, and I'm going to have my first segment of... Uh, incoming transmissions so that's going to be super super fun look forward to that next wednesday um all that said you've taken your first steps into a larger world may the force be with you and i will see y'all in the next episode bye friends